Hey, Ryzen's here. Keeping users informed about the latest updates is crucial for any software product. A well-crafted change look or what's new feature can make all the difference in improving user engagement and transparency. Whether you're fixing bugs, rolling out new features, or making performance improvements, a change look ensures your users stay in the loop. Today, I'll walk you through how to create a simple and effective what's new feature using Increaser as an example. While Increaser's source code is private, you can find all the reusable code in the Ryzen Kit repository so you can easily implement something similar in your own projects. It's important to show both potential and existing users that your product is continuously evolving. On the websites, updates can demonstrate to new visitors that your product is actively being developed, building trust right from the start. For existing users, displaying updates in the app help them stay informed about new features, improvements, and changes. And by posting those updates on social media, you can attract new users and keep your audience engaged. To achieve this, we need a way to manage our updates in a single place, while allowing us to display them across different platforms in various formats. In Increaser's Mono Repo, we organize everything around a single source of truth for our updates by creating a dedicated changelog package. The core of this package is a simple file named changelog.txt, where we log every user facing update. Since we are dealing with a consumer application, there is no need to complicate things with versioning. Instead, we rely on the date of the release and a list of changes. This approach keeps things minimalistic. Each release is separated by a timestamp, and individual updates are listed one by one, each on a new line. This simplicity allows us to manage updates efficiently while ensuring that all changes are easy to track and understand. If our changelog.txt file doesn't start with a timestamp, it means that those changes haven't been officially announced yet. This simple convention allows us to keep track of updates that are still in development or awaiting release. Once we are ready to make the update public, we add a timestamp to signify the release date. While having a simple text file is useful for logging updates, it's not the most convenient format to work with in our TypeScript code base, especially when we need to reuse this data in different contexts. To handle this more effectively, we introduce the product update type, which structures all the necessary information about each update. The product update type builds on the product update socials type, which is essentially a record of URLs to the social media posts related to the update. This allows us to easily track and manage the various announcements across platforms like Telegram, LinkedIn, X, and more. Following that, we have a released ad field, which stored the timestamp of when the update went live. The name field gives each update a title, while the description provides a summary or an overview of what the update is about. Finally, the items array consists of product update item objects. Each item represents an individual change or feature introduced in the update, and for now, each item only includes a description. At some point, we'll need to store product updates in a database, but since we haven't made that many updates yet, a simple product updates.tss file will suffice. This file will contain all the updates in a single array, making it easy to manage and reference in the code base for now. Once we've collected enough items in the changelog.txt file, it's time to start announcing them to our users. This process begins with the generate.ts file script. First, we read the existing product updates from the product updates.ts file using the read product updates file function. The inject product update function is responsible for adding a new empty product update to the existing list of updates. It takes the current file content as a string and partial product update object, which initially only includes the released add field set to zero. The function first split the file content string around the product updates array declaration, which separated the part before the declaration and the part after. It then creates a product update object with default values and overrides any values provided in the value argument. Finally, the function inserts the new product update into the array by reconstructing the file content and returning it as a string. 
This ensures that update is properly injected into the product updates file while maintaining its structure. With the new string containing the updated product updates, we can use the create TS file function from Radeon Kids Cogen package to write the changes back to the product updates file. Since we'll also be making a YouTube video about the update, we can streamline this process by creating a new file specifically for the YouTube script. This script will be stored in a YouTube folder inside our changelog package. Additionally, we'll set up a separate YouTube folder outside of the Mono repo to contain all the assets for the video. To streamline the process of creating YouTube video scripts for product updates, we've built a script that generates a prompt specifically for ChatGPT. While using the API is a viable option, I personally choose to use the ChatGPT interface since I'm already paying for a subscription. This helps avoid paying for API usage on top of that. However, if you're not paying for a subscription, you could easily adapt this process to use the API. First, we need to read the changelog file and transform it into a more structured format that's easier to work with in our code. We define a changelog item type to represent each entry. This type contains two fields, a released add, which can either be a timestamp or null for unreleased updates, and items, which is an array of strings representing the individual changes in that update. The parse changelog function converts a raw changelog string into an array of changelog item objects. It splits the input string into lines and processes each line individually. If a line contains only digits, it is treated as a timestamp marking the start of a new changelog entry. The current entry is then pushed into an array and a new changelog item is created. Non-empty lines that aren't timestamp are treated as product updates and added to the current item. If no timestamp has been encountered yet, a new item with a released add set to null is created, indicating an unreleased update. At the end, the last changelog item is pushed to ensure all updates are captured. Once you've parsed the changelog, we can easily extract the unreleased changes and insert them into a prompt for ChatGPT. However, to ensure that ChatGPT understands what Increaser is all about, we rely on a context.md file which contains all the raw information about the app and its features. While this file may seem a bit lengthy, you only need to write it once and update it as the app evolves. By sending the content of this file before the prompt, ChatGPT has the context it needs to provide high quality outputs that are tailored to the app's functionality and updates. Once we receive the script from ChatGPT and refine it, we save it in the latest.md file inside the YouTube folder. This file serves as the finalized script for the video. After that, we record the video and post it on YouTube. To save time, I don't create a custom thumbnail for every video. Instead, I simply update the date on the existing thumbnail to keep things quick and efficient. With the video and thumbnail ready, the next step is to put the content on YouTube and other social media platforms. To streamline this, we use the announce.t script, which generates prompts tailored for each platform. This ensures that our announcements are formatted appropriately for YouTube, LinkedIn, Telegram, and other channels. As we pull the update, we simultaneously update the first item in the product update.ts file, filling in the URLs for each post. With the social media announcements completed, the final step is to announce the update on the website and in the app. To do this, we first need to complete the product updates.ts file with the actual update details. This includes filling in the name, description, and items fields for the latest update. We can achieve this by running the prepare.ts script that generates a ChatGPT prompt designed to help us scrub the remaining fields. Now, the final step is to fill in the released add field. For that, we use the release.ts script. This script automatically sets the release date in the changelog.txt file, update the product update.ts file with the new release add value, and renames both the YouTube script file and its corresponding folder to reflect the release. With the product updates finalized, we can deploy both the app and website which share the product updates list component. This component pulls updates from the product updates.ts file 
order them by the released add field in descending order and display each update using the product update item component. Each update is separated by a line using separated by line from Radeon Kit for a clean and organized layout. In the first section of the product update item component, we display the release date, update name, and description. The release date is formatted using the date VNS library to show a user-friendly format. Both the update name and description are rendered using the text component from Ryzen Kit. If an update includes a YouTube video, the product update YouTube video component embeds a YouTube player directly into the app, allowing users to play the video in place. The video only loads when it becomes visible on the screen, thanks to the intersection away component from Ryzen Kit improving performance. The element size aware component from Ryzen Kit ensure the player resizes responsibly. The video is displayed in a styled container with borders and rounded corners, and the use boolean hook manages the play and pause state. To ensure we only render content when there are social media links or update items, we use the non-empty only component from Ryzen Kit. This component checks if the array, socials or items, contains any elements and are only rendered the content if it's not empty. This prevents unnecessary rendering of empty sections and keeps the UI clean. In the app, we display a dot next to the bell icon when there are new updates the user hasn't seen. To handle this, we simply update the viewed new features at timestamp when the user visits the What's New page. This is done using the use update user mutation hook, which triggers an update when the component mounts, marking the updates as viewed. In the Futures Navigation item component, we display a notification indicator appeal with a count next to the bell icon when there are new product updates that the user hasn't seen. The use user hook provides the user's data and use memo calculates how many updates have been released since the user's last visit to the What's New page within the viewed new features at timestamp or their registration date. If there are any unseen updates, the number of updates is displayed in the appeal style component, otherwise the bell icon is displayed without the indicator. The user can click on the bell icon, which links to the updates page. In summary, building a what's new feature helps keep users informed and engaged by showcasing the latest updates across your app, website, and social media. By streamlining the process with automated scripts, reusable components, and a centralized changelog, you ensure consistency and efficiency. Whether it's displaying updates in app or posting them across platforms, this setup keeps your product development transparent and user-focused. That's all. Please like the video and subscribe if you found it useful.